Hello everyone, welcome again to another Word for Today with Ray. And as usual, before we begin, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, every day we have the opportunity to share with you in your Word and to know that you want us to know your principles. You want us to know about you. You want us to know about your son, Jesus. It's a marvel to us. And so we take great uh, gratitude. We give gratitude to you, O Lord, for allowing us this time to share together. We pray as we study this book of Galatians again today that you, by your Holy Spirit, will lead and guide us into all truth and then empower us by your Spirit to live according to that truth, we pray. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. The title to today's lesson is The Fruit of the Spirit, Part 2. And it's taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 5 and verse 22. After listing the daunting characteristics of the flesh nature within us, Paul the Apostle has begun to share with the Galatian church members the fruit of the Spirit of God living within a Christian life. He began with the singular fruit of love, and from love we learned comes joy. In chapter 5 and verse 22, we continue to look at Paul's list of the fruit of the Spirit in the book of Galatians, where he wrote, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Next on Paul's list is peace. Peace is the idea of tranquility, harmony, and concord. It protracts security, safety, and fearing nothing. The Bible speaks of two kinds of peace, peace with God and the peace of God. Peace with God is obtained when we commit our lives to Jesus Christ and all sin that separates us from God is removed. The peace of God, however, is an inner peace that regardless of the circumstances which surround us, there is peace within. Paul adds long-suffering. The idea with long-suffering is patience, enduring, constant, steadfast, and persevering. It means to suffer long. Suffering in itself can be hard enough, but to know that the fruit of the Spirit is that it lasts for a while is where we may know we need to have God's Spirit ruling within us. Paul continues, gentleness. Gentleness relates to moral goodness, integrity, benignity, and kindness. When a person is filled with God's Spirit of love, he or she is prone to be gentle toward others. We all know there is more than ample opportunity for this fruit to be demonstrated in our world. Paul goes on to say, faith. Faith is belief with the predominant idea of trust or confidence. It manifests itself in fidelity and faithfulness. When we are filled with the Spirit of God, we encompass the idea that we can be relied upon and trusted and we will rely upon and trust others. When we are filled with faith, we have an intuitive knowledge that everything will be working together for good, and no matter what we face, we will have faith that God is able to handle it all. There are two more fruit of the Spirit mentioned by Paul, and we shall look at them tomorrow or the next time we're together. However, for now, it would behoove us all to review the list he has provided thus far and ask, are these fruit of the Spirit flourishing in my life? Next time, we will look at two more characteristics of the fruit of the Spirit. So read ahead and let us join together then. Until tomorrow, there is more. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace as you continue to study his word. In Jesus' name.